Hello, hello, hello. All right, how y'all doing? Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, April. Hi, prime time. I'm excited for this interview today. Welcome to the Yeah Wellness Check In. CBG30 or CPBG30. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Mo. Thank you, thank you. I wouldn't be able to do this today if it wasn't for my good friend, Mo Ivory. We're going to have a great conversation today. Excited to talk to this young man who is an original AT alien. That's exciting. All right, let's just wait for him to come into the chat. So I know you guys are like, where have I been? I was on vacation. Hi, John Roberts. I finally, finally, finally took time to pour back into myself. And y'all can see I got a little tan going on. You know, it's been a good week. It's nice to just get away and, you know, walk the walk instead of <laughs> talking the talk. So, uh, hi, talent expert. Good to see you. Uh, I'm just excited, you know, and I'm rejuvenated and I'm happy to be back. Um, it's just, it was a blessing. And I'm grateful that God spared the hurricane, which is coming where I was this week. But it's been good. It's nice to, like, see everybody on here. I hope y'all had an amazing week. I hope that you took care of yourself. Um, and no matter what it is, it's funny, I'm, I'm recommitted to like doing some self-care every single day in my life, whether it's like coloring or at the end of the day, I like to do these word searches or even looking at mindless TV, a little Netflix and chill. Um, I'm, I'm just grateful for, for God's grace and ability to be able to, again, pour back into myself. And I hope you guys are pouring back into yourself. Great to see you. Great to see you too. So everybody, please, please, please give a warm round of applause for John Ossoff. Welcome to the Yeah Wellness Check-In. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Hey, everybody. So John, I have to just tell you, um, of course, I was reading a little bit about your background. I'm familiar with your work and I'm definitely a fan, but you're from Atlanta and so am I. We don't meet a lot of, you know, natives that often. And so that was exciting for me. Yes, Atlanta, born and raised, same uh, as my wife, Alicia. She uh, works at Grady Hospital. Okay. But yes, I grew up in, in 404 and 770. And I saw when you had 404 in your um, IG handle that you were a, a, a true ATLian. Yeah, that's exciting. And then I noticed that you are a graduate of Georgetown. And so one of my nephews just got accepted into Georgetown. Unfortunately, with COVID, he couldn't go up. So they're doing virtual mm. school right now, but he'll be playing football there. So that's exciting. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's a few point of connections that I thought was pretty cool. So uh, I'll, I'll get right into it again. I'm glad to have you on the show. I wanted to know how you and your wife are doing at this time, first and foremost. I appreciate it. She actually just walked out the door. You might have heard the door close as we logged on. She's finishing six weeks, maybe it's five weeks, I think six weeks of night shifts wow. in labor and delivery, uh, which she loves. But, you know, she got cleared for a return to the hospital uh, about a month, month and a half ago. And, and she got right back in on those night shifts. And they really work those, um, you know, residents, the, the, the junior doctors mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. And a lot of the different medical units are short staffed off and on at the moment because the medical staffs are getting sick. So um, it's, it's heavy duty. It takes real um, toughness. I, I uh, you know, the things that they see and deal with on a nightly basis mm -hmm. are um, extreme. Yeah. And, and they become accustomed to it, but um, you know, she handles it uh, and, I'm I'm real proud of her. So she's doing well, and I'm and I'm doing well. And you know, Shanti, anywhere, anytime I talk to folks, people always ask me how I'm doing. Like, like running for office is some kind of, um, uh, you know, extreme activity. But I'm like, look, I, my wife is on her feet 14 hours a night delivering babies. I'm fine. You just need yeah. to ask Alicia how she's doing. She's the one, uh, really, really carrying the heavy load right now. Absolutely. Well, we salute Alicia and all of our essential and frontline workers. And, and I just tell her that I said, even though we don't know each other, 
thank you for all the work that she's doing for our community. It's really appreciated. She'll really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And, you know, so many of us have really been, you know, experiencing a lot of challenges, a lot of, you know, differences in our daily activities, having to work from home, all of these Zoom calls. I know for one, sometimes I wish I could just do a regular conference call and not so many Zooms at times. What have you been doing for self-care and wellness? You know, it, it's a ton of Zoom calls I know with you running for office. And what would you recommend to folks who are having a hard time right now? Just still kind of adjusting. I know we're about six months in, but I tell people every day brings something different. Yeah, well, speaking for myself, Shanti, um, especially because the schedule is grueling. Mm -hmm. For me, self-care is, you know, uh, is so important. And there's, a, it's just the basics, but it's so easy to lose track of the basics. Right. And, you know, and something that I think we should get into more detail on is looking after the basics is oftentimes a luxury. It's a privilege. I mean, I, I try to stay as disciplined as I can about eating well and eating regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, about getting good and regular sleep and sticking to a routine, trying to get in at least a half hour of exercise every day and mm -hmm. trying to just sit mindfully and meditate for yeah. 20, 30, 40 minutes a day if I can. And, you know, I, I start my day with a, a routine that lets me settle in. When I wake up in the morning, I don't check the phone. I don't get all the inbound news and messages. I try to kind of start my day in a... Um, in an orderly way without polluting my mind and my spirit with all that negative energy that's out in the world each morning. And that helps me um, sustain the kind of endurance necessary mm -hmm. for an undertaking like this. And, and for a lot of folks, um, you know, the, the problem that we have in, in American society and our economy right now is that the basics, you know, healthcare, housing, education, mm -hmm. a steady job that pays well at a, at a normal work week, are, are so difficult for so many people to achieve. Um, and then mental health uh, is so neglected yeah. um, that we have a lot of folks who are, who are suffering. And, and the good news is that I think we can do a lot to improve that situation. Absolutely, I agree 100%. And speaking of mental health, uh, I founded an organization called Silence to Shame Incorporated. And uh, John, my father, took his own life when I was seven months old. And in 2014, my best friend took her own life. And then in 2015, I came close to taking my own life. Nothing that I'm proud of, but nothing that I'm ashamed of either. I have, you know, by the grace of God and the work that I do and the people that support us have been able to share my journey and story across the world. And it really is an honor. And September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And then we have Mental Health Awareness Week coming up in World Mental Health Day in October. And so I just wanted to kind of talk to you um, a little bit more about our health, right? And the type of year this has been with so many people worrying about their health, I think more than ever before. Um, you recently released a health care plan. Can you tell us a little bit more about your approach around our physical and our mental health, John? Absolutely, Shanti. And thank you for sharing your, your personal story. And you know, our, our physical and our mental health are, are, are one, they're linked. It, you know, it's all part of the same um, effort to remain healthy and it shouldn't be so hard to remain healthy. Yeah. We have two basic problems. One is affordability, which is that Georgia families, families across the country are just getting ripped off left, right and center by insurance and drug companies. And the other is access. Mm-hmm. Even those who can afford insurance, although it is too expensive and dealing with the insurance companies can be a nightmare, oftentimes it's so, so difficult to get medical care, to find it, to access it, to find it conveniently, to uh, find someone in your network. You know, there are, there are uh, parts of this state where you're hours away from a level one trauma center. You can be an hour, an hour and a half away from a primary care physician. Half of our counties have no OBGYN doctor at all. My wife practices OBGYN medicine. And so it's no wonder that we have such a maternal mortality crisis here. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not surprising that then the, the outcomes, there's these huge disparities by race and by class. Yes. And, and so the plan that I put forward, you know, just tries to solve these problems in a straightforward way because these are not mysterious problems to solve. That's kind of the tragedy and the opportunity of it. We get everyone covered with great health insurance. We offer a nonprofit public option. 
on the ACA exchange. Really? For, for folks who are on private insurance, we strengthen protections for pre-existing conditions, crack down on price gouging by drug companies, and invest in building new clinics and expanding the public health service so we have the not just doctors and nurses, but also counselors and mental health professionals that everyone can access. One of the things I'm really excited about, Shanti, is the idea of building some of these clinics, which will provide preventative, primary, urgent care, and mental health care near our public schools. That's so that fantastic. young people can access those services. And families, when they're dropping their kids off at school, go get a flu shot and a checkup and, and, uh, and whatever else they may need. I love the fact that it people are finally looking at and taking mental health seriously, right? So that it really shouldn't be a difference. It's not a difference between physical and mental. It's really all one and the same because they can both affect one another. And one of our goals and dreams at Silence of Shame it was to produce uh, and build some community clinics. So who knows, maybe there's some synergies there and we can partner up in the future, but I love that. And even for me, being, I've been an entrepreneur for 10 years and going back to what you were talking about, just having access to affordable health care. You know, this was a tough year for me because I really just couldn't afford um, the insurance that was out there as an entrepreneur. It seemed like at the, be the, the end of 2019, you know, so many companies were dropping their plans in Georgia, and that was frustrating. And even the state, you know, was taking away a lot of um, the money that was being used um, towards mental health funding. So I'm really happy to hear about your plans and everything that we can do to build together. I appreciate it. And, and you know, the other, the other piece of, of the puzzle that's missing, that our, our states refuse to expand Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And that means that hundreds of thousands of Georgians who could have help affording health insurance uh, aren't getting that help. It also means that our rural hospitals aren't getting the support that they need. It's, and it's really, like I said, it's not like these are mysterious problems to solve. Right. We just need to get serious about solving them. And what we have in Washington is a political system that's so corrupt yeah. that really just what the you know, big insurance companies and the big pharmaceutical companies want is what Congress does because you know, they have all the power because they write those big campaign checks. Yeah. Well, again, we really appreciate you for speaking on behalf of the people. I think that's something that's extremely important right now, and especially during the pandemic. And well, really, it's a, it's a double pandemic, right, for a lot of people um, in the African-American community and communities of color. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about health and the concerns about the economy. This year, we've had a double, double whammy, right? Can you talk about how those two have been connected, especially with the pandemic and the crisis? Well, I mean, for starters, Shanti, as we all know, our government has botched the response to this pandemic from day one. Mm -hmm. It was denial, misinformation, lies, cover up. They knew, Donald Trump knew, Georgia Senator David Perdue knew they were getting briefings behind closed doors on what was really coming. And they didn't level with the people about it. They were dishonest with us. Mm -hmm. And they sent mixed signals. They politicized what should have been a public health driven response. Absolutely. It should have been the doctors and scientists leading the charge, not the politicians. Right. And so then we found ourselves with this virus out of control. And everything that flowed from that has compounded the economic devastation, has led to so many people feeling and being isolated being under tremendous financial stress and all of that just exacerbates, you know, mental health issues, uh, increases the rate of folks who are feeling depressed. Um, seen some really troubling statistics about how much more common suicidal ideation has become, particularly among young people mm -hmm. during this time. Mm -hmm. And um, this feeling of isolation and anxiety that then is also made worse by a political environment where there's so much division and hatred and negativity. And we don't have a leader who's bringing us together and providing positivity and, and, and you know, feeding our spirits anything but just more lies and division.
I mean, this is exactly the kind of moment when what we need is national political leadership that appeals to the best in us, that makes us recognize our common humanity, that encourages us to look out for one another and brings us together. But instead we get the only thing that, sad to say, Donald Trump knows how to offer, which is hate and fear. Yes, I was just gonna say fear mongering, right? What we need right now is hope and and that is my hope for, for Georgia, for Atlanta. Um, I, I'd like to know a little bit more about that hope, John, that you can bring back to us and make us stronger after the pandemic. Well, I think that we do need to take that long view and we need to allow ourselves to feel hope mm -hmm. and to remember that feeling and to recognize that even though there's so much hate out there, most people are good people. We all want the same things out of life. We're all on the same team. And, you know, I have right here, I'm going to, I'm going to um, twist the phone a little bit for you. I have right here a, a cartoon framed on the wall. Oh, I've uh, seen that. I love that. This is by Mike Lukovich, you know, the AJC political mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cartoons. It's of John Lewis using his body as a bridge for the people yeah. to march across to the polls. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, symbolizing powerful. the march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, and how we sacrifice so much for civil rights and voting rights. I say all of that to say that John Lewis talked about the beloved community. John Lewis taught that we will only achieve our potential as a country. We will only achieve our potential as humanity when we focus on the fact that we are all sisters and brothers in this together, empty platitudes, that is yeah. the basis for progress. When we forget that, mm -hmm. that is when we fail because we rise or fall together. And so we're at this moment in our history, I think that's, that's so challenging because we're grappling with the long-term legacy of institutionalized racism flowing mm -hmm. from imperialism and chattel slavery and Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're wrapping our heads around and being honest about those disparities in a way that is new and necessary. And at the same time, we have to be reminding ourselves that we are all in this together and that we're binded, we're bound by our shared humanity. Mm -hmm. And that's how we'll move forward yeah. as one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm just uh, at a point where all we have is hope right now. Right. And so I, I'm moved by your words. I'm moved by um, your the human spirit that you have inside of you. And I really do pray that we have a good outcome in November. And speaking of November, it's a really important election coming up. Right. From a national perspective, local perspective. How do we make sure that every person gets out to vote? Because, you know, we've seen in the past that we have people that have registered to vote and they're just not voting, or some of our younger people are out on the front lines and they're protesting, but we want to make sure that they also take those protests to the polls. How can we get more people involved, John? So this has to be a bottom-up, community-wide, movement-style effort. We have to all take the initiative. We have to all assume leadership. And for everyone who's tuned in, and hello, everybody, by the way, thank you for uh, checking out this IG live stream. Pull out your phones right now for me, if you will. And I want you to text VOTE to 51015. Text VOTE to 51015. And you will get all the information that you need to check your registration status, register if you need to, find out how to apply for your mail ballot. We will update you when the early voting sites are posted and early voting begins October 12th. And then you got to invite all your friends to do the same y'all. I mean, this has to, this takes all of us. Uh, you know, we can't wait for the call. We all have to have that spark within us to take action right now. This election is not 50 some days away. November 3rd is just the last day of voting. The ballots start flying next week. That's so right. now is the time for action. And I know we do not want to ask ourselves, what more might we have done? There's too much on the line. What's the deadline, John? For, is it October 5th for registration? 
October 5th is the registration deadline. Early voting begins October 12th. Okay. And if folks text vote to 51015, they'll get all the information they need. We're going to make some virtual flyers and I might even make some t-shirts so we can, I can wear that. So I'm wearing it around 24 seven. T-shirts are a good idea. Yeah. Cause you know, it's walking billboards, right? We, we, we need to make sure we get this out to the people. So I know I've taken up a lot of your time and I'm so grateful, but I always like to end on a fun note, if that's okay with you. And I'm calling this segment, what's your fancy? Cause I know you got your, masters in london and i'm I'm a fan of of uh europe and, and and london culture so um i thought what's your fancy might be cool but anyway uh do you like tea or coffee that's funny you should ask that i like both but right now you ask me how i'm taking care of myself i'm drinking tea like all day <laughs> in fact i just got this insulated 64 ounce thermos no way and at the and i'm just at the beginning of the day, filling it up, and I'm drinking tea like all day long. Uh, I do, I do love coffee, but it's a little bit harsher. You know, you don't. I don't really want to drink coffee all day. So I have, I have one coffee in the morning usually, and then drink tea the rest of the day. How about you? I'm a tea girl. Uh, I've started drinking a lot more tea, and since I've been traveling, one of my favorite things is to buy tea from different areas. So right now. I'm drinking some of my tea that I got in Canada that I love. But yes, I'm definitely a tea girl. And I, I want to make mention, there's a gentleman on here, Dion. He said he donated and didn't receive his lawn poster. So we're going to get back to you, Dion, so we can get you a John Ossoff lawn poster. D Dion, the, uh, it's kind of a, a good problem to have that the demand has been so extreme for the signs that I think the warehouse ran out and they, they're rushing new orders out. So there may be a little bit of a delay. And I saw here also Stephen Robbins, 56, mm -hmm. asking about my health care plan. And Stephen, we had a long conversation about that at the beginning of the session. So rather, rather than going all the way back over it, I appreciate your question. And what I want to uh, ask you humbly to do is check out electjohn.com slash policy, and you'll be able to see uh, my health care plan. But, um, and I'd just also the like question. to say to him that this will post to my Instagram so he can check back in and mm. watch the interview in its entirety so we can, you know, make sure he hears all the good stuff that you had to mention about your healthcare plan. Great. Uh, okay, next. Uh, do you prefer to work at a desk or on the couch in the pandemic? I work at a desk. Me too. How about you? I, I have to work at a desk because I have to try to create some sense of normalcy. And we talk about this a lot. Um, in terms of just creating boundaries and creating healthy places and spaces for yourself. Even if you live in an apartment, you know, you really need to try to get yourself out of the bed or something that's too comfortable um, and put yourself in your work sp workplace, <clears throat> you know, whether it's from nine to five or nine to one and you take breaks. It, it, I think it's important that we try to keep a regular schedule and that helps to cut down on some of the anxiety. So for me, yeah, definitely a desk as well. <laughs> and, and I don't know about you, Shanti, but I also... You know, because normally what would be happening right now is I would be every day in a different part of the state. Because there's so much less moving around and, and so much more time in the office, I have been much more attentive to keeping it neat and organized and exactly the way I want it to be. That's so, right. but it, so but it is that space that centers me and, and orients me toward doing effective work. Yep. Same here. I agree. Do you like to take walks or are you a runner? I, I like I like walks. I like I haven't been running so much recently. I've been um, yeah, I've been working out more at home. My wife and I, when she's not on night shifts, try to get in a walk. You know, if not every day, then at least a few times a week together, just to get some time uh, together outside. But um, I live right near Grant Park. Oh, I love so it. So it's uh, it's you know easy to walk down and just enjoy the park. Yeah, same here. Um, I live north of the city, but there's some great parks here. And sometimes I'll drive up to Helen, Georgia, uh, to the mm. Anna Ruby Falls and, and just kind of take it in. I lost my sister last year. So this grief journey has been interesting for me, um, to say the least. But when I'm out walking and in nature, it, it really calms me. And I feel like I'm closer to her when I'm out walking. So definitely. Well, I'm walk sorry her. for your loss. Thank you. Shanti. I appreciate that. Are you an early riser or usually stay up late and work? I, I would say I'm not naturally an early riser, but I've trained myself to become an early riser out of necessity. 
but the, the key the key is the key is getting to bed on time and then the rest yeah. flows from that for me <laughs> exactly i i think uh i can definitely tell that i'm getting a little bit older because i'm starting to go to bed a little bit um earlier and and i'm definitely an early riser now all right so my last one is do you prefer books or magazines and i know it's not even a ton of magazines that are on the shelves these days but books for sure what's your yeah. favorite book Oh, my favorite book. I don't know if I could give you a favorite book. I'll, I'll oh, tell oh, you are that. Are you reading anything? Better yet, are you reading anything right now? Yeah. So I, I, you know, the days are pretty intense and focused, and you know, my team and I are working like sixteen-hour days right now, and um, so I just started reading the novel Shogun. Okay. Uh, which is historical fiction, which, which is like as far from politics and current affairs and, and whatnot as you can get. Um, so kind of transport me. Awesome. Uh, so I've been enjoying that. What about you? So there's a book that I love that I read before that one of my friends wrote, but I'm rereading it now because I feel like, you know, oftentimes where um, a lot of the self-help books, you can reread them and you get things and gems that you didn't get the first time. It's called Exponential Living by my dear friend, Sherry Riley. And basically it's about um, teaching you how not to spend 100% of your time on 10% of who you are. And so I am just trying to stay focused on really finding out who I am, what my purpose is. And I do know that my purpose is, you know, to really educate the community around emotional health and wellness. And so I'm just excited about, you know, the future for Silence to Shame. And I'm also excited about your future, John. And I can't thank you enough um, for being on the Yeah Wellness Check-In today. Thank you to your your beautiful wife and all the work that she does. And I certainly know that I'm going to do my part to get all of our folks out in the community in Atlanta to make sure that we support you. Can Thank you, you tell so everybody, much, Shanti. Um, give us your website again or any of your social handles to make sure that we can follow you and we can continue to get the word out about early voting. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And thanks for the voice you give uh, to the issues that you care about and the focus on mental health. Um, and I really, really appreciate the opportunity to, to be here. Uh, and I want to encourage folks to make that plan to vote now. Text VOTE to 51015, and then text 10 of your friends and tell them all to text VOTE to 51015. You can follow me on IG at John Ossoff, Twitter at Ossoff, on the web, electjohn, electjon.com. You can read the full campaign platform there, volunteer with the campaign, text vote to 51015, make a plan to vote now. Early voting opens up on October 12th. There's a lot at stake, y'all. Uh, don't do it for me, do it for all of us, uh, for our country and for humanity. So Shanti, thank you so much for, for having me and I hope we can do it again. Absolutely, thank you. Blessings to you, John and your wife. Thank you so much, same to you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.